Welcome back to Vintage Steel Garage. Today we're going to be changing the oil on the 2010 Ranger Rover Sport. Today we're going to be changing the air filter and the oil filter on the Range Rover Sport. You need 6 litres of oil, 5, 5 W30. It's cost me £28 for the oil and the filters. I've just changed the oil on three of our cars, so I'm just going to score them. Basically, I'm going to give the Fiesta. It's for the ease of servicing it, because these people make these cars, and they know you're going to service them. So why make them difficult? For example, the Ford, I'm going to give it a 6. And the reason I'm giving it a 6 is, there was no belly panel on it, so you could drain the oil easily. But the filter, instead of being upside down like that, it was on its side. And it's a cartridge, so it's full of oil, and it's up there, so your arm's up the side of the engine. So what happens? You unscrew it, and the oil all runs down your arm. It's disgusting. Why not do it better? So they're getting a six. Now the BMW, that's getting a nine. And the reason that's getting a nine is, no, actually I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm gonna give it an eight, because I needed to take the belly pan off. Why didn't they put an access hole with the belly pan for the drain plug? Uh, but that was better, in fact that it was a cartridge filter and you unscrewed the cap from the top and lifted it out, therefore oil does not run down your arm. So that's getting an 8, the Fiesta's getting a 6, this might be on for a 9. And the reason this could be on for a 9 is, first of all, I don't need to jack the car up, put it in off-road mode, so it's raised up. However, do put axle stones under it because you're not reliant then upon air suspension. And it's got a little drain plug, it's, it, okay, it's got a belly pan, mm. again, mm. why don't you just make a hole big enough to put a socket through, so you can take it off. Uh, it looks like the air fil it looks like the oil filter's at the top, and the air filter's at the top. So first of all, I'm going to drain the oil. So this car last had an oil change in May 2022 at 107,000 miles, it's now only done 115,000 miles, so it's sort of 2,000 miles off the recommended change, but nearly two years in. So I'm going to change the oil. Now there's three ways really you can get the oil out of this car. One is, and I think it's the way to go, is to suck the oil out and then you're not taking belly pans off cars. The second way is to take the drain plug out which is here, which is there, or you can take this oil drain off which is actually low and you just press that detent in and slide the pipe off and hopefully catch the oil. So we're going to try and slide this pipe off here while videoing it and not doing what I did with the BMW and get it absolutely bloody everywhere. There we go. Look at that, it's actually going in the bucket. Isn't that amazing? So we'll leave that draining and we'll have a look at the oil filter up above. What I should have said and I didn't is you do actually need to take this belly pan off here. Not the front one which I took off by accident, you take this one off. Now also if that's the front of the car, that's the left, that's the right. There is a bit of oil around this area which coincides with oil underneath there. And it does say it has a power steering uh, leak which you can actually see because the power steering fluid is on minimum there. So that's another challenge to look at. Right, let's get the oil filter out. So that is under here. Basically take the cap off, pull the trim off the top of the engine, and the oil filter is there. So what we need to do is get a socket on there, Take the oil filter out, put the new cartridge in. What you need here is a 32mm socket to go on the oil housing here. And what I do, I just have a tub ready just to actually put it in. Um, because when you lift that out, it's going to leak in a little bit of oil.
So the next thing to do is just take the oil out of the actual housing itself. So that just pulls out. That just pulls out, he says. So that just, it's just a bit of a snug fit in there. So that just pulls out a sharp tug. New filter comes with a new O-ring. Then we just take the O-ring off here. Put a new one on, just give this a bit of a wipe over. So we just put the new O-ring on. And the right groove, just put a little bit of smear of oil on it, put a new filter in, there we go, and that's ready to go back in the car. So putting it back in is just a repeat of the removal, the only thing I'd say is because you've got a socket on it, don't go bonkers, tighten it up my hand at first, just to get it there and finish it off with the socket but don't go mental just snug it up that's it there's just a few drops of oil still coming out so we'll just leave that a little while longer and we'll have a look at the air filter now the air filter is just underneath the cover, so what we can actually do, we can leave all these in place and just undo all this um, Phillips screws that are all the way around and lift it out. There we go, so we just lift that up and take that out. It does actually look quite clean to be honest, it does sort of reflect the, um, the mileage it's done, but it's not dirty in the creases, a little bit of dirt there but nothing major, that's one way of just checking, usually all these creases here will be full of dirt because this is the clean side, so I'm going to put a new filter in. Under there. there we go. Fasten the screws back up. There we go, filtered on. So what we want to do now is get the oil in. Um, as I said to you before, what I like to do is um, basically pour it in by hand or jug. So I'll put five litres in. Then I'm going to put it down on the level. Um, you check it from inside, I'll show you how to do that. See where the level reads and we'll top it up from there rather than overfill it. So I'm just going to pour five jugs of oil in now. I very, very nearly forgot. Click this back on. There, so just push that on, so that's that in place. Let's fill the oil up. Okay, so the first of five going in. Two, three, four, 
three, four, five. Right, so I've put five litres in. What I need to do now is just tidy off, clean out the top, put the belly pans back on, get it on the level, run it for a couple of minutes, let it stop, and I'll show you how to check the oil level inside. And that should be the service done for £28. And half an hour of my time. Great. So what we're doing now, just to check the oil level, you press the start button, don't press the brake pedal, then press the OK button here to clear the fault. Well, it's not a fault, just the bonnet being open. And then scroll down to service menu, press that, oil level display, press that, and you can see, hmm, it says press OK to clear, not available, interesting. OK, so it turns out when it says not available, what it really should say is just wait 20 minutes for the oil to settle. So let's just run through it again, so you press the start button. Don't press the brake pedal, it's going to tell me my bonnet is open, which is fine. I just OK that. OK to clear, OK to clear. Press OK again. Press down on the little button here. Press OK, oil level, press OK. And there we go, it's just short of maximum one bar down. So I'm happy with that, I'm going to leave it like that, I'd rather have it like that than overfilled. Next stage is to reset the service light. So okay, to reset the service light that comes up, um, let's have a look, let's just see if it does come up with the service light at the moment, because I haven't reset it. There it says service required. So let's turn it off and see if we can follow this instruction of what to do. So first of all, it says turn, it's a turn on ignition, foot off brake. Open the bonnet, which is what we've obviously done because the bonnet is open because we're doing the service. Open the driver's door. So we'll open the driver's door. Sorry about the chiming. Hold the gas and brake pedal for 30 seconds. Some people have said 10 seconds, but let's just do... 30 seconds and then it's let off the gas and brake obviously it's American and turn off the ignition so we'll wait that far turn off the ignition right so let's go back to starting it again so press the ignition press the brake start it So it still says service required. Okay, let's try it again. Again, the only thing that's different is someone suggested closing the hood. So everything's turned off. We've got the hood open. So it says um, press the ignition switch. So we're not starting the car. Open the hood. Open the door. Now push the brake and the accelerator pedal for 30 seconds. I suppose I didn't do that last time, so let's do that this time. Right, okay, so I counted to 30, took my foot off the brake, I'm going to drop the bonnet down, and then let's see if that's reset. Right, bonnet's closed. Press the start button. Press the brake pedal. Press the start button again. Oh, it's still saying service required, isn't it? Okay, further analysis required. Done the service on the Range Rover Sport. Uh, changed the oil. I'm going to give that a 8 out of 10. Probably took me half an hour to change the oil. And about 45 minutes to actually check the oil, work out how to check the oil level because you've got to wait the 20 minutes for it to settle for it to then come on and then you do your final top up 
then wait a few more minutes, check it's okay, and then the service reset, well that was a combination of opening the bonnet, pressing the start button, opening the driver's door, pressing both pedals until the bing bong finishes, which is your door open, which is a minute, take your feet off the pedal, turn the ignition off, and then start the engine, which we'll do now, and uh, hopefully the service light has gone away. Yes, so there we go. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. There'll be more work coming on the Range Rover because it's just a Range Rover. Uh, the job I do know about is a drive shaft CV, front drive shaft CV. So that's going to be the next job that we do. So, bye for now. Thank you.